I hope, uh, you know, where I see, it's not that universalism does not mean, oh, we are all together one big family. I hate this, what I call UNESCO universalism. You know, those disgusting books published de decades by go on world culture, and every culture is beautiful in its own way. No, every culture is horrible in its own way. Every culture has, how do you say, bodies, dead bodies in its closet. So I will tell you my experience, which I think at least conceptually shows the way. Derrida, among others, told me this wonderful old, no, me, he uses it somewhere, but it circulates in my journal, this wonderful Jewish joke, which I think uh, uh, applies ideally, I will try to answer you what is false universalism, applies ideally to, and precisely about this nowhere, you know, we are nowhere, to our situation. I'm sorry if you know the joke, it's that in a, in a synagogue, Saturday or whenever, Jewish believers meet and first the rabbi says in this self-humiliating way, oh my God, I am nobody, I betrayed you, I am not worth of your attention, I am a nobody, ah, uh ah. -uh. Then a rich Jewish mer merchant stands up and said, oh my God, I am a nobody also, all my wealth is nothing, blah, blah, blah. Then a poor Jew stands up and says, oh uh -uh, my God, I am also a nobody. And then the rich, it doesn't matter who, one of the two rich ones, stabs the other and says, but who is this guy? He just thinks that he can be a nobody like us or whatever, <laughs> you know. I had exactly the same experience in a debate in Vereinigten Staaten where it was about multiculturalism and so on. And uh, I warn you, there are now many very intelligent black theorists. They don't buy this bullshit identity politics, whatever. They are very intelligent. Some of them even Hegelians. And one of them told me this experience. I was there. Uh, uh, you know, it was this multicultural and these white liberals, one after the other, said, oh, Eurocentrism, we are responsible to, uh, we are responsible of everything, we are bad, we cannot be blah, blah, blah. And then he told me that he stood up and said, in your spirit, but wait a minute, we also have our Muslim fundamentalists, you know, Louis Farrakhan and so on, we also have, and literally, they look, the white liberal, like, uh, wait a minute, no, no, you also want to be nothing. No, sorry, we are the ones who only can be. In other words, this, uh, here I speak a little bit as not practicing psychoanalytical because, you know, once it happens to me from time to time that when I give some class, a student comes to me and says, can I go into analysis with you? And my answer is always the same. If you want this, you must really be in trouble. You know, you feel like, uh, with all my nervous tics and so on. <laughs> you in okay, so, uh, 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 but nonetheless, I would like to, I'm uh, to verwenden, to apply this notion of mer genus, surplus. It, you should, oh, when somebody humiliates himself too much, you should always ask, what's their secret profit? You know, and their profit is clear precisely by humiliating themselves. You find this so clear with this multi, these people of nowhere, as you would have put it. They apparently humiliate themselves. We are nowhere, blah, blah, guilty of everything. But this gives them a tremendous, I witness this almost on a daily basis in political debates, privilege. As such as nobody's, they think they have a monopoly on judging the others. I remember, I had a wonderful debate, I'm sorry if you know the story, in Missoula, Montana, with some Native Americans. They don't like the name, and I don't. You know my old joke. They, one of them told me, I much prefer to be called Indian. At least my name is a monument to white men's stupidity who thought they were in India. They, immediately see this trap Native American. Ah, so we are nature, you are cultural Americans or what? So uh, how uh, this apparent self-humiliation reserves to you this position of zero point, you are 
above all particular identities you are <coughs> so uh, the black guy then taught me and i repeat this all the time that the struggle should be for universality itself. Every white liberal loves it when black people want uh, African roots, our identity, our ancient wisdom. No, the true danger, but in a good sense, for us good, is blacks who say, no, your white people's universality is not yet truly universal. We must be, to put it like this, better Europeans than you. That's why I always celebrate, for example, I always almost cry when I read about Haiti revolution. It's the most beautiful, every leftist should cry. You know, when black slaves rebelled there, Napoleon sent an army. And all honor goes here to Jacobins, who immediately recognized Toussaint Louverture. Napoleon sent an army, killed them all, and then uh, the French army approached the slave army, and they thought they, hear, they heard some songs from the black army, and they thought it must be some primitive African tribal songs, and they got shocked when they approached it. You know what the black army was singing? Marseillaise. And all honor goes here, because I didn't say many good things, to Polish regiment who changed sides. Said, oh, sorry, maybe we are right fighting on the, you, you see, the true struggle should be every position, even the most particular, has a certain notion of universality in it. it and we should fight, so the, the answer, I agree with you, is what was wrong in our universality so that we left out and to ordinary people it appeared that they had to protect their particularity and so on and so on. <laughs>